This is part two of my trip from Chicago to Los Angeles on Amtrak's Texas Eagle. In part one, we made it overnight through the Midwest in Arkansas and down to Austin, Texas. Now we're nearing San Antonio, where my sleeper car will join with another train for the next two nights through western Texas and the southwest all the way to LA. When we pulled into San Antonio Station, we were actually about 20 minutes late. But not to worry, we had plenty of extra time. No, no, excuse me. Yeah, I'm continuing to LA. What do I do? Is the train just going to sit here for a couple hours? The train is going to sit here. The train departs at 2.45. Right. They're going to take that car off and the sleeper over here, they're going to add them to the train. So how this works is we're here now at 10 o'clock. The Sunset Limited, which left New Orleans this morning at 9 a.m., it's halfway between Houston and here now and it will be here in a couple hours. My car and one of the coach cars, I think, we're going to join it. That's all gonna take a long time. We're gonna be here for five hours. So, with the full moon in the sky, saying goodbye to this train, these engines are gone. They're going back up to Chicago tomorrow. So it's really a whole other trip starting from when we leave here. The crew that I got to know, like my attendant, Janae, and the lady in the cafe, and. The Sylvester in the dining car, they're all done. They're going back to Chicago tomorrow. I also wonder how many of my fellow passengers are continuing like I am. Probably not that many of them. They've unloaded lots of the, lots of the uh, baggage and everybody's taken off. As I said, only 4% of the people who ride Texas Eagle actually go to Los Angeles. I could wait in a little dingy waiting room or I could just wait in my nice roomette on the train. I was asleep when it happened, but we did indeed join the Sunset Limited and leave San Antonio exactly at 2.45. All night we pushed west across southern Texas. By the time the sun rose on the third day, I woke up feeling a bit confused. It was quiet and the landscape was barren. And the Amtrak world outside my roomette was different, but as yet unexplained. All right, well, good morning. It is about 7.30. Um, got a great southern Texas sunrise happening outside. And uh, we're a long ways through Texas. Uh, we have about seven more hours in Texas. I gotta say, this train ride has become very mysterious. They have not made any announcements for anything at all since about two o'clock yesterday afternoon. So I think there may be something with the speaker system or something in this car because that's unusual. They make announcements for every stop. They also explain other things sometimes. So very importantly, they explain to us sleeping car people how the meals work because we don't know and they haven't said anything so now that the trains have changed what happens for breakfast is different than it was from chicago to san antonio there's a different system now and i don't know what it is because they haven't said anything no one's introduced themselves i have no idea what's going on well i met the new attendant out in the hallway and i told her i think something's wrong with the speaker system so she opened the control panel and there was like a microphone she went and blew into it and it seemed to come through. She goes, okay, it should be working now. And I'm highly skeptical, but we'll see. But more importantly, she told me about breakfast and she explained the meals today. So now I can go to the dining car. It's a different dining car with a different menu than the Chicago to San Antonio part. So I think it's a, a wider selection and maybe more uh, high quality stuff. So let's go see what breakfast is like here on the second half. Hello. Yes. Okay. Are you sitting in coach yeah. or in a sleeper? Sleeper. And room number? Four. Four. Gotcha. Can I start out with something to drink? Oh, uh, it's coffee. Coffee? Gotcha. Let's welcome our sister to take the legal that came down from Chicago. You're now part of the instant that was Train number one, headed towards Moscow as well. The dining car is now closed for breakfast. Thank you. The dining car here is traditional dining, which is you get plates and real silverware and stuff, and they actually cook the food, they make the food here, and you also sit with whoever has space at their table. So you get to talk with a lot of strangers and stuff. So I sat with these two ladies, very, very nice, and we talked about travel and trains and Amtrak and the country and the scenery and all that. And I ordered French toast with bacon, and it was good, but it was very small. And everybody else had these big plates full of like grits and, and scrambled eggs and potatoes and croissants. I was like, why does everybody have such a big meal? So I asked the waitress or whatever, the attendant, I said, can I get like some eggs or something? She's like, well, let me go ask my manager. She came back, she said, well, because you are a sleeping car customer, my manager
manager said, yes, we can give you a second meal. <laughs> so she brought me a plate of scrambled eggs and uh, a croissant and potatoes. So finally it was a real meal. So I had a great conversation with the ladies and had good food. Um, so here's what's going on with the train today. We made one stop overnight only. I slept through it. Um, today we're going to be in Texas for a few more stops. Then after lunch, about 2 p.m., we're going to be entering New Mexico after El Paso. We spend the afternoon in New Mexico, then we spend the evening in Arizona. Then the night will be California. Also, when they stuck my sleeping car onto this new train, they just stuck it onto the back. They also switched it around, so I'm sitting on the opposite side, now sitting in the opposite chair. I get a whole different view of this roomette. Also means I have unencumbered access to the view out the back of the train, right down the tracks. So, cheers. Here's the second cup of coffee. Um, sit back, watch the freight trains go by. And the next step out break will be Alpine, Texas. That's coming up in an hour and a half or something. So I will get to get out and stretch my legs and have my morning routine, my morning exercises. And speaking of routine, the announcements were working again. Sanity was restored. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be going through a time change. We'll be going from Central to Mountain about an hour and a half after we leave the station stop of Alpine, Texas. Alpine, Texas. Is the highest railroad town that the sense of limited in the Texas Eagle Travel Serve. It stands at 4,485 feet above sea level. A lot of people have said that uh, Alpine has the best weather in all of Texas. Once we arrive at the station, make sure that you look on the left side of the train. There's a, a little place called Alpine Studios, a place where they edited some of the John Wayne movies that he made out here in Alpine or the nearby towns. He had his own little office there. He used to love Alpine. This is Alpine, Texas, the first stop of the day. The first, uh, the first stop where I can get out and stretch, and I really intend to do that. These morning exercises, or whenever exercises, I highly recommend. If you're riding a long-distance train like this, You've got to get some exercise. It's not good to just sit there immobile the whole time. So anytime they let you off, get out, walk around the platform, walk around wherever you can walk around. Usually these stops are about five minutes. Sometimes they're as long as half an hour. Look at Alpine. It's cool, still by 72, 73 degrees here. Excuse me, how long, about how long do we have here? Yeah, we got about, uh, say about 15 minutes. Okay, thanks. Yeah, just don't move too far. Huh? Right. Okay, we said I got about 15 minutes here, so I can go wander around town a little bit. Wander around Alpine. My original plan for this big Amtrak trip was uh, three years ago until COVID made me cancel it. And the original version of that trip had me come here on Sunset Limited from New Orleans, get off the train at Alpine and spend a couple nights here. Of course, that changed. Now I'm just doing Texas Eagle and I'm not stopping here, but I wish I had. I would really like to come back and see this town, Alpine, a little better. Walking around a couple of blocks from the station, keeping kind of a nervous eye to the Amtrak train. Make sure it's still sitting there. my people I see my train and see my people still standing around outside I'm definitely coming back to Alpine to see this better rent a car and see the area for two or three days maybe maybe find me a senorita play some music for her on the guitar next to our cactus oh 
Oh man, there's too much here. Alpine's gonna make me miss my train. Kind of a Sergeant Pepper version of Texas blues and Texas country pioneers. I think on the far left at the piano might be a young David Bowie. Well, maybe not. Also, the Texas Eagle passes the Prada Marfa art installation, which I first saw on a three-month road trip a few years ago. Surprised to suddenly whiz by it again. El Paso is approximately three and a half to four hours away, depending on freight traffic. Uh, you'll get another opportunity to step off in El Paso, get some fresh air, and have that cigarette break. Also, when we get to El Paso, there's a lady that sells uh, delicious burritos on the platform, Juanita the Burrito Lady. I want to thank you for traveling with Amtrak and thank you for your attention. The attendant just came around and asked me what time I wanted lunch, so I got the 1.15 uh, slot to go there for that. And I'll be honest with you, I'm feeling a little bit kind of grungy today. I thought I could skip my shower last night and everything would be okay, but I don't know. The Texas heat is getting to me, so I'm going to go down now in the mid-morning take a shower. It worked. Fresh as a daisy. Cafe Vegetable Quest. You all have been pitching in and throwing your trash in the trash boxes that we have. You guys have been cleaning up after after when you go to the bathroom, you pick up your the papers that are on the floor and helping us keep this train clean. So because you all have been so great of folks traveling with us, I am going to give you guys a very special treat down here in the cafe. That means there are certain items that are going to be selling for half price. Now, not everything's going to be half price, but I've got mac and cheese that is seven twenty-five, fifty percent off. Barbecue vegan burgers. I tried one. I'm not a vegan person, and I thought they were just excellent. They go, go for uh, seven fifty, as a matter of fact, and uh, we're going to sell for half price. Breakfast sandwiches. They usually go for six bucks. We're going to sell for half the price, so three bucks for our breakfast sandwiches. Uh, fresh cut veggies for those of you that are that like like the fresh cut veggies and the hummus. Half price on that. Limited time only and until supplies last. This special will not be going on for the whole day. So the uh, early bird gets the worm, you know. Hello. Hello. So, do you have? There's like a little pack of. Uh, Raw vegetables like celery and carrots yeah. and stuff. They're door number seven. I have half price right now. Great. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That makes twenty. All right. Thank you. Good to go. Thanks. Do you have a tip jar? Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very I like the Amtrak meals and all, but you gotta have your vegetables. Point of interest, we are passing through McNary, Texas. It's a small farming community. From this location, you can see the country of Mexico on the left side, that south side of the train. That mountain range off in the distance, that is Mexico. I love watching these little, little communities go by in Texas. It's just a little, a little cluster of, of uh, mobile homes or simple houses. Sitting in the sun, old trucks, old uh, 
water towers. Like great, really interesting places with a lot of character and personality. And we just passed into the mountain time zone. This whole time since Chicago, we've been in the central time zone. That's how weird this route is. You really have to stay on your toes if you're following along with the schedule because mountain time zone, we're in daylight savings time now. So everything's an hour ahead of where it normally would be. But Arizona doesn't do daylight savings time. So uh, El Paso and New Mexico do. So you go ahead, back one hour when you, when you get close to El Paso. Then you get into Arizona and you're back another hour because they don't do daylight savings time. Then you get into Pacific time in California, but it's the same as Arizona because they well, like do said, do, do daylight savings time. On a trip like this, you find drama where you can. So here's the next drama that's going on today. I've accidentally scheduled my meal, 1.15 p.m., for 10 minutes before we arrive in El Paso, Texas. In El Paso, we're going to have a 25-minute chance to step off the car. But I'm duty-bound to be in the dining car during that time, eating my lunch. So it looks like I'm going to miss one of the only three chances today for stepping off the train. I really wanted to get off and look at El Paso and feel the El Paso air. And I don't eat fast, so I'm not going to get out and make it real quick. That's just how it is. But here's the deal. The website says we're about 15 minutes early. We're running 15 minutes early, so if we get there at 1.10, I might be able to step off for about five minutes and then go have my meal. Will the Amtrak gods actually make that happen? I don't know, but that's more exciting than murder on the Orient Express. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jose, your bounding car attendant. At this time, we'd like to invite those of you holding 115 to 115. Your tables are ready. I didn't make it. When my lunchtime was called, we were just pulling into El Paso Union Depot so I could only gaze onto the city from the dining car. But I was having my own good time there anyway. I had a really cool lunch with these two guys in the dining car. I'm talking about Arizona and New Mexico and all these kind of cool places to visit, all these uh, hidden canyons and things like that that they know about and I don't know about. Um, we're in New Mexico now. We have two stops in New Mexico. Crossing over from Texas into New Mexico was pretty dramatic because we crossed over the Rio Grande River to get into the state. And as we did so, we were within 10 or 15 feet of the Mexican border. You see the wall right there. I had no idea that the train went that close to the border, that close to Mexico. I'm starting to see some cactuses here. One of the guys at lunch was telling me that when we get closer to like Tucson and beyond Tucson, it's going to be lots of big saguato cactuses. So that'll be a highlight. But for now, I'm just going to sit here and watch one of my favorite states and some of the best scenery in the country, New Mexico. What time would you like to come in for dinner? Uh, 6.45. 6.45, gotcha. When you hear the 6.45 announcement, bring that with you. We'll see you then. All right, Thank thanks. you. Open or close? Uh, open. Open. All right. Just so you know, you can sign up for my free email newsletter, and each week I'll send you travel news and background information and a link to the newest video before it's actually published on YouTube. And special thanks to my patrons on Patreon who are supporting this channel and my travel videos. If you would like to join up for as little as a dollar a month, you can help give me a vote of confidence for the surprisingly intense work that it takes to make all these videos. Especially thanks to Omar, Ray Nichols, and Will Phillips. And now back to the show. We just left Lordsburg, New Mexico, and we're about to cross into Arizona. I just wanted to catch you up on the state of the, the Union, the state of the train. After this long on the train, 
that like the novelty of being on a moving train going across the country is worn off. It's just like it's just normal reality now. But you can look out the window and you see all these trucks and cars and restaurants and uh, houses and kind of all all the things that used to be normal life. But it's like watching a TV show. It's like watching a TV screen. Like it's not really real because the only real thing is aboard the train. So what you really do is you sit here and you move at a constant, slow, steady pace. And it kind of evens out all of your thoughts. And so there's not peaks and valleys really in, in your emotions and your daily existence. It's just this is what's happening. And I don't mean to say it's unpleasant. It's actually awesome. Um, but really all you do is you sit here and you think, like, I wonder what scenery is going to come next. And this scenery is nice. And look at that thing. And when's dinner what's when's the next meal you know it's a very peaceful sort of zen like existence here there's something sort of above and separate from the rest of the world i guess that's the magic of a truly long distance train is it just takes you out of world out of the world puts you in a different world and it's a it's a unique and strange world Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jose Van Gerson, and at this time we thank you by those who are the 645, 645, which is so kind of bittersweet. The final Amtrak meal of this huge 65-hour journey. Um, it's a three-course dinner, though, and I've already chosen what I want. There's a completely full moon. It just rose. It's very orange and yellow. It's hard to capture with the camera. Cactuses are starting to go by. Once again, I have unfortunately scheduled my dinner right during the last step-off uh, spot of the trip, which is uh, Tucson. A little bit. It wasn't even my fault this time. It's because the, the schedule I printed off from the internet, internet had like wrong times on it. So if I eat kind of fast, I can get out there and see the air of Tucson. But if not, the next uh, air is Los Angeles. And the classic Amtrak salmon meal, which I never can say no to. So somehow I've got my own table, apparently, all to myself. And I like sitting with the people, but, you know, it's nice to have a whole day for yourself with nice silverware and stuff. For the last meal, to sort of sit, stare at the moon, and ruminate about all that's passed over the last, it's only been three days, but it seems way longer than that. Also, they just announced that we're arriving into Tucson a little early, but we're going to leave on time. It's a smoke break or a fresh air break, they said. And as soon as he said fresh air break, I heard two ladies at the next table and burst out laughing. But you know what he means. Fresh air that's not train air. Um, so if I eat this, if I stop talking to you, and if I can eat this in about uh, 25 or 30 minutes, I think that should be doable. Then I can go outside and see the air of Tucson for the last step off of the trip. So go away and let me eat.
Tucson Station. I wolfed my food down, which means I uh, basically ate it at something like a normal person's speed. And I made it outside the air of Tucson. It's nice, it's warm, it's maybe 85, but it feels really good, really good to be outside. And as far as I know, we're still scheduled to arrive early at about 4.44 a.m. is when we're supposed to arrive at LA Union Station. I don't even know if the station's open then. But what's coming tonight is a little more darkness uh, for the rest of Arizona, most of Arizona. And then I think after I go to sleep, we'll be entering. Oh, I gotta go, I gotta go. Whoa, gotta go. Whoa. Don't leave me behind. Sorry, sorry. Every meal, every dinner, every lunch comes with a dessert. And I've been saying no to all of them because I just don't want dessert. Don't feel like taking extra insulin for them. But it's the last meal here, so I said, why not? So I got the lemon layer of something cake. Oh, little berries on, look at that, look at that. Got your Amtrak plastic plate. This is how the trip ends with this is how the food on the trip ends, in my private compartment. I took it into my private compartment to sit here and ruminate at my leisure as we leave the Tucson area, heading further west towards the end of the line. <laughs> the final update before bed said we were still on track to arrive early in LA Station, 4.30 a.m. instead of 5.30. But just in case something delayed us overnight, the cafe guy had a plan. I will open up for service at 6 o'clock in the morning for a little bit for complimentary coffee and waters. Now that's only if we arrive after 7 o'clock. For now, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like on-time arrival into Los Angeles and until something uh, weird happens that uh, we get delayed, then I'll open up. No morning announcements will be done. This will be the last announcement, so I hope you heard this announcement. For now, ladies and gentlemen, we wish everyone a good night. It's been a pleasure serving everyone. I hope you had a great trip. Ladies and gentlemen, 10 minutes after we depart Ontario will be our Pomona station. And then just about 35 minutes after Pomona will be our last and final station stop. Los Angeles Union Station. This train will be out of service upon our arrival into Los Angeles and everybody will be required to exit the train. Also, coming into Los Angeles, all passengers will be required to remain seated and in their seats. That means with your backside on a cushion until this train comes into Los Angeles. The train pulled into Los Angeles Union Station about 10 minutes early. I must say, not bad for a three-day odyssey. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, dear. All right, well, here we are, Union Station in Los Angeles. We're a little bit early. It's still dark for a little while. I don't know what I'm going to do, wander the streets around Union Station, I'm sure. That's a nice idea. So thanks for coming with me on this ride. This is uh, not just a train ride, not just a way to get from Chicago to L.A., obviously. If you wanted to do that, you'd just fly. This is a way to have an experience. You see the landscape, and you really have an experience unlike anything else that's possible. Kind of blurring the lines between riding a train for a while and temporarily living on a train. That's how long this train ride is. So, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.